Before I get into it, I just want to say that this video is fair use, so all the media used in this video is used for criticism, review, or in a transformative way. All the information presented is public information, and everything else is alleged to joke or just my opinion. So the first thing I want to talk about is Being Dead, which was reasonably a while ago, but if you didn't hear about it then, you probably still don't know about it now. Essentially what happened was John Roderick posted on Twitter saying, So yesterday my daughter, who was nine, was hungry, and I was doing a jigsaw puzzle, so I said over my shoulder, make some baked beans. She said how, like all kids do when they want you to do it, so I said, open a can and put it in a pot. She brought me the can and said, open it how? With a can opener, I said, incredulous. She brought me the can opener and we both stared at it. I realized I'd never taught her how to use it. Most cans now have pull tops. I felt like a dope. What kind of apocalypse father doesn't teach his kid how to use a manual can opener? So I said, how do you think this works? She studied it and applied it to the top of the can sideways. She struggled for a while and with a big dramatic sigh, I said, will you please just open the can? Apocalypse dad was overjoyed. A teaching moment just dropped in my lap. I said, the little device is designed to do one thing. Open cans. Study the parts, study the can figure out what the can opener inventor was thinking when they tried to solve this problem. And the story just continues and it's a long ass motherfucking thread, but essentially the entire premise of the story was kid was hungry, dad didn't feed them for six hours because he was trying to teach them how to use a can opener so badly that it took six hours. I couldn't find decent screenshots of the rest of the thread, so if you wanna try and find that on your own, you can, but somebody on Reddit said, at one point in the story, his daughter says she's too hungry and her head is fuzzy, so she can't think straight about how to solve the problem, at which he says, not the exact wording, he deleted his account, when your head doesn't work, trust your hands. Which is also really concerning, like if she's gotten to the point where she's telling you I can't solve this question because I'm too hungry and my brain ain't working, like... But obviously people called him out for this since it's like high-key neglectful. So he then said, Somehow my story about teaching my daughter how to work out how to use a can opener and overcome her frustration got over onto a version of Twitter where I'm being accused of child abuse. It's astonishing. My kid is fine, everybody. The best part about being ratioed by these parenting concern trolls is that they keep harping on about how depriving my kid of baked beans for six hours is child abuse. Six hours is the length of time between meals. Lunch at noon, dinner at six. They're literally saying child abuse. Listen, if you're getting to the point where you have to say, like, this is how we schedule our meals and therefore it's fine like D'Angelo pointed out in his video that if she was already past the first meal enough to already be hungry then that's that amount of time plus the six hours six hours is not a very short amount of time and if you are a hungry child and your parent is refusing to feed you that's obviously going to have some effect on you it's damaging to a child to know that their father could very well give them food when they are hungry to the point that their head is fuzzy and they're just choosing not to. So then this led to a bunch of people bringing up old tweets of his which included The fourth has been perverted by activists, Jew, judges, and mud people apologists. The founders intended USA as white homeland. Every time I use a word like Homosexual or unintelligent Some not very smart homosexual person Reminds me those words are hurtful. Your attempt at furry anime cuteness does not conceal your gaunt, methy, haggardness, cyborg, muppet, transgender person. Somebody said Matt's soccer team was called to the store stormtroopers but the mothers of other teams made us change it because of the nazis to which john responded with jews ruin everybody's fun i'm so gratified that the multiple conversations i'm having about the asshole daniel tosh are for the most part sane and civil bravo and then somebody commented under that to which he responded with i'm going to rape you the next time i see you bad rape not funny rape rob delaney said hello canada to which john responded with would you like me to rape you with my gun and he responded to another tweet which is now unavailable with that was a consensual rape those tweets were all between the time frame of like 2010 and 2013 and they were very very consistent and there are many tweets like that so you can make up your mind about how to take that information but he did end up posting an apology after he deleted his twitter account and it says i had to reflect on what i'd done and the hurt i'd caused and my mind was clouded by an unprecedented flow of new information I want to acknowledge and make amends for the injuries I caused. I have so many things to atone for. My parenting stories, insensitivity, and the legacy of hurtful language in my past are both profound failures. I want to confront them directly. My story about my daughter and the can of baked beans was poorly told. I didn't share how much laughing we were doing, how we had a bowl of pistachios between us all day as we worked on the problem, or that we'd both had a full breakfast together a few hours before. I would like to point out that all this is very trivial. The breakfast that was mentioned doesn't matter, she was hungry. The laughing that they were doing also doesn't matter because she was frustrated 
and hungry and deprived of food. And the bowl of pistachios is not only just like a random thing brought up that nobody can disprove or prove, but it's also just as trivial as the rest of this information because she was hungry and if she continued to be hungry for those six hours where you refused to feed her, then obviously the pistachios weren't enough. Her mother was in the room with us all day and alternately laughing at us and telling us to be quiet while she worked on her laptop, we all took turns on the jigsaw puzzle. I framed the story with me as the asshole dad because that's my comedic persona and my fans and friends know it as a bit. What I didn't understand when posting that story was that a lot of the language I used reminded people very viscerally of abuse they'd experienced at the hand of a parent. The idea that I would withhold food from her or force her to solve a puzzle while she cried or bind her to the task for hours without a break were all images of child abuse that affected many people very deeply rereading my story I can see what I'd done. I was ignorant, insensitive to the message that my pedant dad comedic persona was indistinguishable from how abusive dads act, talk and think. I woke up yesterday to find that I had become bean dad. I was a locus for a tremendous outpouring of anger and grief. It took me hours to fully grasp. I reread the story and saw clearly that I'd framed it so poorly, so insensitively. Bean dad, full of braggadocio and dickhead swagger, was hurting people. I'd conjured an abusive parent that many people recognized from real life. I am deeply sorry for having precipitated more hurt in the world, for having prolonged or exacerbated it by fighting back and being flippant when confronted, and taking my Twitter feed offline yesterday instead of facing the music. I wish the parents I modeled didn't exist. I wish no one had to grow up with a parent who tortured them physically or emotionally. I would never intentionally make light of those experiences and I'll never underestimate again the pain I cause with some poorly chosen words and by acting defensively when challenged. As for the many racist, anti-Semitic, hurtful and slurful tweets from my early days on Twitter, I can only say this. All of those tweets were intended to be ironic, sarcastic. I thought then that being an ally meant taking the slurs of the oppressors and flipping them to mock racism, sexism, homophobia and bigotry. The thing is, when you are not part of those groups that you are making fun of, allegedly, ironically or sarcastically, how are people supposed to differentiate you from the oppressors? If you look and act and sound like the oppressors, how are you not one? I am humiliated by my incredibly insensitive use of the language of sexual assault and casual banter. It was a lazy and damaging ideology that I continue to believe long past the point I should have known better. Because I was a hipster intellectual from a diverse community, it was okay for me to joke and deploy slurs in that context. It was not. I realized sometime in the early part of the decade, helped by real life friends and Twitter friends too, that my status as a straight white male didn't permit me to repurpose those slurs as people from disenfranchised community might do. They were injurious regardless of my intent because the words themselves have power and because actual violence is often prefaced by people saying I'm not a racist but that was wrong so I stopped. Yesterday those tweets resurfaced and hurt a lot of people anew. People who are close to me, people in my community who couldn't square those words with the person they know me to be. And people who don't know me going about their business yesterday had to see those awful slurs and feel the hurt those words inspire. They had to suffer this asshole bean dad casually demeaning them and their friends. I deeply regret ever having used those words. I do not want to spread more hate in the world, I want the opposite. My language wasn't appropriate then or now and reflecting on that has been part of my continuing education as an adult who wants to be a good ally. That education is ongoing and this experience will have a profound effect on the way I conduct myself throughout the rest of my life. I'm a middle-aged, middle-class, straight white male and I try to be cognizant of that and of the responsibility my privileges entail in everything I do. In this case, it was precisely my privilege of not living in an abusive family, of not being a member of a community that routinely experiences real trauma that caused me to so grossly misjudge the impact of the language I chose. I have a lot more reflecting to do in the coming days, so I'll be taking a hiatus from my public life to let some of these lessons sink in. I apologize to my partners, my friends, and to all the people affected by my words for the hurt I caused. When people try to reclaim slurs and stuff, usually one, it's reserved purely for the people that belong to those groups that the slurs are aimed at, and two, the meaning of the slurs are typically altered. For example, black people who try to reclaim the n-word don't typically use it as a negative word, as an offensive term towards other black people. Women who try to reclaim the word slut typically do not use it in a negative way towards other women. So when you use these slurs in the exact way that they were made to be used, how is it taking power away from the oppressors rather than giving them more of a voice. In regards to his response and apology for the whole being dad situation, he's very adamant that the situation was exaggerated and that it didn't really happen the way that it happened. And he apologizes more for the emotional response that it triggered more than what he actually did because again, he's saying that he didn't actually do it the way that he wrote it, which we as the public will never actually know. So if he did do these things, he just apologized said that it wasn't true and then moved on but if it was genuinely not that big of a deal then this apology does seem to fit into that quite well 
Kellyanne Conway is the ex-counselor to Donald Trump and she recently posted, or at the very least it was posted from her account, her daughter's nudes on Twitter fleets. Claudia Conway, who is her daughter, is 16 years old. She made a TikTok where she addressed the situation and confirmed that the nudes were hers. That's real and so here's what I guess happened. The pictures were months ago and I'm assuming that when my mom took my phone, um... <sighs> Anytime she's taken it, because she takes it all the time, she took a picture of that. So that was on her phone. Um, and I guess she accidentally posted it or somebody hacked her, but nobody ever, nobody would ever have any photo like that ever. So Kellyanne, you're going to f***ing jail. Obviously she doesn't appear very happy in this TikTok and she also ended up posting TikToks of what appeared to be abuse that she experienced at the hands of her mother. This includes both physical and verbal. But she did end up deleting these TikToks. She then posted this TikTok. This isn't forced. This is coming completely from me, Claudia. Um, I have faith and I know that my mother would never put something like that on the internet as well as me. We would never do that. My mom and I, we fight like mothers and daughters, but we also love like mothers and daughters and I do love her. I will be taking a break from social media um, because... We are really tired of being headlines. And people are highly suspicious of this because she said earlier that she would never leave social media of her own accord. And obviously her mother is scary and powerful. I also found a tweet by Kaylin that says, She did report the abuse to the police and CPS, but due to her mum's status, nothing was done. Okay, I'm on a computer right now. Um, but everything was taken from me. And I do not know what to do. I spent all day at the police office, the police um, station, and nothing happened. And I don't even want to post this because I'm so scared. The last thing that I want to talk about is Lana Del Rey because Kim Trails Over the Country Club recently came out and she has changed the caption since then but the original caption that she posted on Instagram for her like promo post I guess for the song was I also want to say that with everything going on this year and no this was not intended these are my best friends since you were asking today and damn as it happens when it comes to my amazing friends and this cover yes there are people of color on this record picture and that's all I'll say about that but thank you. First of all I've said this before but I'll say it again we need to start bullying people with such shitty grammar because this was so difficult to read. And secondly, who the fuck asked? <laughs> Literally where? My beautiful friend Valerie from Del Rio, Mexico. My dearest friend Alex and my gorgeous friend Dakota Rain as well as my sweetheart Tatiana. Why are you listing off your friends of color for an Instagram post to prove, I guess, that you're not racist? when nobody asked these are my friends this is my life we are all a beautiful mix of everything some more than others which is visible and celebrated in everything i do in 11 years of working i have always been extremely inclusive without even trying to really because it seems like you're trying quite hard my best friends are rappers my boyfriends have been rappers Black people and rappers are not interchangeable words. I feel like this has to be on purpose because there is no way in hell, like the first bit made sense in the sense that like maybe she was like trying too hard to prove that she's not racist. But this is like obvious where like she's trying to let people know that she's racist. You know what I mean? My dearest friends have been from all over the place. So before you make comments again about a woman of color, person of color issue, I'm not the one storming the capital. Nobody said you were, but you are the one making it about race and how much of a white savior you are for no reason. I'm literally changing the world by putting my life and thoughts and love out there on the table 24 seven. Yes, girl, look at you changing the world by changing literally nothing and making no positive impact whatsoever. And also not supporting or standing up for people of color in any way, shape or form while trying to claim that you are in ways that are blatantly racist. Look at you go. Also, this ain't love. This is defensiveness because you were trying way too hard to try and convince people that you're not racist, which you didn't have to do in the first place. Very few people thought that you were actually racist before this, but now we just have confirmation that you are. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, if you liked me, make sure to like and subscribe. If you didn't like me, make sure to get in contact with my teachers because I bet you have a lot in common and make sure to stay safe and stay hydrated.